Who am I? My name is Rogelio J. Somewhere. If you can't pronounce my first name, you can just call me Ro. <laughs> I am a solutions barista. I made that up, by the way. They don't. <laughs> you can make up your own titles at Hashrocket. <laughs> at Hashrocket, of course. I have been a Linux sys admin, a software engineer, and tall for a longish time, <laughs> I think. That's my Twitter, it's my email, my blog, all five posts. I, uh, I let them, they, they, I make them count. And uh, my GitHub's, and that's it for me. So now, feast your eyes on this. Medium turkey chili. <laughs> Medium crab bisque. <laughs> I didn't get any bread. Just forget it, let it go. <laughs> um, excuse me, uh, I think you forgot my bread. Bread, two dollars extra. Two dollars, but everyone in front of me got free bread. You want bread? Yes, please. Three dollars! <laughs> No soup for you. <laughs> so you may be wondering what that clip had anything to do no. with uh, my talk. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's a show about nothing anyway, right? Anyway, no soup for you. Here's what we're going to accomplish. Are you ready? Today's mission, no pseudo, the final frontier. Explore a near-perfect development environment, to seek out cases for pseudo, to boldly go where no developer has gone before. A star, not really, but it sounded good. Well, you may learn some other things along the way. So anyway, uh, pseudo, I guess it has its place, right? Mostly in the enterprise. Um, multi-user environments. You know, it allows for logins. You, I'll, I'm going to zoom into this. So these are two commands, right? You can, you can run sudo mysql status, or you can run su-c, and then the command that you're going to run. What, that, what that's doing, wait, I have a pointer. No, I don't have a pointer, do I? Yes? No? I don't. That's right, I don't. Yes, please. The top. Uh, and the top. Okay. Let's try that. Right. <laughs> Check the batteries. No worries. And okay, it doesn't work. All right, it doesn't work. <laughs> so if you see up there, it says uh, the the first one is with sudo. So it's it's telling you that the user Fry, you know, was running it. He <laughs> he ran <laughs> he ran. Oh, there you go. He ran the command uh, MySQL status. So you know that it was fry, and you know that it was he, he ran this command as, as root. With this, all you know is in, in the logs back, you know, whenever you come back and check it out, is that the user fry ran something as root, but not what it did. So you know, it's not entirely useless, right? Uh, there's nothing really wrong with it. Um, and you know, I, I, I use it to install uh, tools that I trust, right? Uh, because there's a lot of uh, crazy stuff that could happen if you have a make file that you know, just says rm-rf slash. You know, that can delete your crap pretty, <laughs> pretty quickly. So the question is, why no sudo? All right, sudo has no place in the Ruby development environment. The par part of the problem is, most of us, who's using Ubuntu or some sort of Linux and uh, OS X or Endor OS X? So er most everybody, I, I, I think I saw a couple of Windows machines here and there. I forgive you. <laughs> uh, well, Ubuntu and OS X specifically uh, said, don't really set a default password for root, so that's bad because that, um, 
forces us to use weak passwords, right? And um, like, I, like I said earlier, sudo can potentially wreak havoc in your box. Um, in sudo, if you run sudo gem install, it'll, inst it'll install Ruby in your, uh, in, your, in your system Ruby, which we'll get um, to this later, but that makes it incompatible with RVM. And it's also not ideal for homebrew uh, in OS X. So here it is, what I think should be perfect as a development environment. Uh, the cool thing is Debian folks have apt, Gen2 guys, peeps, persons, have Portage, which is, to me, one of the best uh, package dealy buffers. Uh, and then Mac OS X people, nothing. <laughs> Pure crap, <laughs> right? Until, until, of course, Homebrew came along to save the day. And it truly is, you know, the amazing package manager for OS X. Now, you may be saying, well, what about Mac ports? If you have Mac ports installed right now, uninstall it. <laughs> Go ahead, I'll wait. <laughs> okay, fine, don't. Fine. Um, the thing about, uh, let, me, let me camp out here with, uh, with this guy, Homebrew. Um, homebrew, I believe that as craftsmen, this right here is our tool, this guy. So our development environment should be our, ours, right? Fine if you share your computer with your wife and she wants to you know, surf the internet, it's fine. But I think what Homebrew is telling you to do is user local should be ch tone to your user. And I think that's fine, in OS 10. Homebrew is OS 10 only, by the way, Ubuntu people, so don't throw rocks at me. <laughs> um, app get, app is, is great. So, you know, Brew allows you to install a whole bunch of libraries and stuff, like, you know, wget, which is not in OS 10, uh, under user local. And um, Homebrew, if there's, if there's something not in Homebrew, it's, 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 made, it's in Ruby, and you can write formulas that will go out and, you know, for instance, Image Magic has an entire, it, it's almost like a chef recipe, but not really, but it's, it's very declarative, right? So you say, this formula is gonna go out and not only install and compile Image Magic, it's gonna go and get lib, uh, JPEG, PNG, and all that other stuff, right? But you only worry about it once you make the, for, the formula and then brew install Image Magic and you're set. How many people know or are using Homebrew? Cool. Uh, great. So, next. Uh, here are the needed goodies for your Ruby development environment. Um, for Ubuntu, of course, you know, curl, bison, build essential, all that stuff to, to be able to compile stuff. In OS X, you need Xcode and Homebrew, like I just said. Uh, and of course, in both, you need them. And I guess, I mean, if you're, if you're Ubuntu, of course you're gonna use them. If you're in OS X, you may want to use Emacs, yeah. but not TextMate. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding, of course. You can use whatever you want. Uh, Firefox and Chrome, MySQL, Postgres. And by the way, MySQL, Postgres, SQLite, Mongo, uh, Couch, whatever, all those, all those are already in Brew. So all you have, to, you have to do is say Brew, install uh, MongoDB, and you're done. And, uh, and I'm gonna show you some of that stuff later. <clears throat> and there's more, but the biggest thing that you must install in your Ruby development environment is my friend, RVM. Who's using RVM? Yeah. Heck yeah, awesome. Hopefully you'll learn something new today. Uh, so RVM stands for Ruby Version Manager. It's a command line tool. It installs multiple Ruby interpreters. It manages sets of gems per Ruby version, which is huge because like I said, if you sudo gem install junk, you have this big barrel of gems full of gems. <laughs> and you can't manage it, right? I mean, I, I'll get to it in a second. I'm gonna show you a little dilly. Um, and you can perform operations over install interpreters and gem sets. Again, this is gonna be part of, <clears throat> part of the demo. Check this out. This is, <laughs> this is a, a gem list from uh, Eric, Eric's computer because he's not using RVM. Check it out. Yeah. Uh-huh. And 
that's that, and I just go back down. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let's go check out Rails. Look at all the versions of Rails he's got there. 1.6. Where's the arrow? Bing, bing. Arrow, 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 arrow. There. There's the arrow. Um, what if you wanted to check out Rails 3 with his gem? System gen install, he can't, right? It, because now, right now, if he runs the Rails command, it's going to generate a 2.3.8 app. So, again, this is a big, oh no, I forgot to take this one off. The next one, it just goes over it again. Oops, just ignore this. Uh, so, why use RVM? Gem isolation, I just showed you, that's crazy to have all these gems in one big pot. Um, gem sets, again, per project, RVMRC, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, a single command to run, for instance, this will run your specs for Ruby 186 and RE. Um, and you can even uh, tell it to run it not only per a Ruby version, but a, a specific gem set. And I'll show you again as part of the demo. And the flexibility to start over and be back up quickly again. Now. Uh, last night, I was showing Eric some stuff, and something went wrong with my, with my environment. So all I did is I said, RVM implode. It deleted my .RVM, and I, I was up. And, and actually, it took longer because of that stupid internet. Everybody, I guess, had, they, they're doing torrents or something. <laughs> but it took forever, but it was, it was taking forever to download the, uh, the source files and, and then compile them. But anyway, so here's the demo. I am brave. I will do a live demo. I'm going to mirror this stuff so that I can see what I'm doing. Did that do what I thought it was going to do? Or not? Uh, oh, there it is. Display. I want to mirror the stuff so I can see what I'm doing here. Uh, some of you are familiar with Hitch. Who is not familiar with Hitch? It's a small gem that I use to uh, give proper uh, author attribution to uh, when you're when you're pair programming with somebody. So when you are committing, make that commit, is it'll show that commit as both of you and not just the person who owns the computer. Okay. Uh, I can give you a small demo of Hitch. Can everybody see that okay? Yep. All right. Uh, I'm not in this project. Uh, I think this project has some stuff. So you see at the top there, Bernard and, and, uh, and Bees were working on that pairing station. And uh, is there any way to make this thing stick? Oh, gotcha. All right. Uh, and so the committer is the pairing station, so because that's where they were working on. But then the author is, you know, dev. We have this, this email dev at HashRocket. And then, of course, you can do pluses after that, any, any number of pluses. So dev plus Bernard Schaefer, which is his GitHub, and then Visas, which is his GitHub uh, username. And then, and then we go to Gravatar and create a Gravatar for that, you know, unique email. And then when it shows up, in uh, GitHub, you'll see their picture based on that Gravatar. So anyway, it's just uh, author attribution. The point of it is somebody wrote, that's using it wrote an issue and they said, hey, they want to do a triage. And you can do that right now. But so the way that that would look like, um, so I would say hitch, uh, sorry, hitch, the Ruby mug, Pat, Maddox, and say tpo, right? And see, now he does it with and, 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 and blah, blah, blah. So this guy, what he wanted is to do a Pat Maddox comma, we're headed to Jason Moore, and Tim Pope. And I was like, fine, we can do that. Uh, but of course I didn't. N not yet, anyway. So let me open Vim, and let's go through. Um, first of all, let me just do a rake, make sure everything it's passing fine. Um, 
And then this is the command that I was telling you about. Power of RVM. All right, I don't want to push. As a matter of fact, you can run rake spec or you can just run specs. Uh, so now it's running it in 186. Everything passes, I think. No, everything broke. Uh, You know, it's supposed to be working, but whatever. There you go. 186, REE, and 192. So my gem is now compatible, of course, with all these, right? Now I want to add this new feature that this guy wanted. Very simple stuff, right? Um, and the first thing I want to do is, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Can you guys see that on the right over here? Oh, cool. So there you go. Now look how fast I'm going to write this. You ready? I can't. Uh, so I'm going to call something like pair count or something like that. Or number of pairs. That sounds better. Number of pairs. And this is just something to illustrate an issue. So it returns the number of pairs, right? And we say do, and then we set up some something or other. Let's say we do this, right? And then we say hitch that number of pairs. Oh, you see that? That should <laughs> equal two. Uh, right, and if I run this, just this one test. And by that one test, I mean not this. Then it's failing because it says, I don't know what number of pairs is. Let's go over here and add this right quick. And again, it's just going to be something like uh, my, yeah, current pair is just a that's it's, it's just an array. So I'm gonna run this. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna run this locally. So that passes. Cool, right? Now let me run this with everything to make sure. And again, that's the command RVM. And you'll notice that I have hitch. That's the gem set. I'll get back to that in a second. But here you go. Oh, oh, oh. What happened? Here's what happened. Array didn't have count in 186. You see? The power of RVM, it picked it up, right? Because I ran, it, I ran my test, and it, it made sure that it, it was running with all 186. And so what I do, simply to fix that, is I go to my implementation, and I say size. And then I run it, like so. And now we're done. Ta-da! <laughs> uh, and by the way, stop me at any time if you have any questions on how I did something or other. Oh, I see. <laughs> You're not supposed to see that. I'm not, huh? <laughs> I guess so. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> the power of Bobby. Yeah. So, okay, so how do, how do we get here, right? Um, Gem list is a lot shorter than the list that I show you that from Eric's computer, right? Um, and RVM info gives you a whole bunch of information. See, now I have a pointer. Um, it's saying that the, the home path, that the gem home is the hitch gem set, right? And then it's going to combine not only that gem set, but every Ruby version has a global, right? And so that global, um, you can install generic stuff in that global one. So for instance, uh, I want to make sure that in all my RVM, uh, all three of these, that whenever I'm moving from one, R from one Ruby version to the other, that I have hitch, right? Because if I'm programming, I want to make sure that all of them have it. If I uh, say RVM use one night, one night, one, that 
9.2, then when I list it, you know, it'll, it's an even shorter list because there's not much stuff installed in 192. And then it shows uh, hitch right there. So I, I, can, I can at any time say hitch, and then it shows me that I'm triaging with Pat and Tim, right? I can unhitch here. I can, R in the, there's an RVM. Oh, this is a bad example. Well, fine, I'll show it to you. This is a per project RVM RC, which means that when I CD into my project, or change directory into my project, that it's going to say, hey, does this exist? And it's going to uh, set up the environment so that it's, I'm using uh, REE and the gem set hitch. If it's not, if it can't find this, it's going to go ahead and create that uh, hitch uh, gem set. Right? Now, let's do something crazy. Uh, I think there's a for loop here somewhere. OK. So this is just going to go through each of one of these. This is going to go through RVM list strings. It's going to give me all three versions. And I'm going to go through each one of them and not create hitch, but I'm going to empty the gem set because I'm crazy like that. RVM gem set. Think about this. RVM use dollar uh, what was it? Dollar X at hitch and RVM gem set empty hitch. So I just want to make sure that I empty all of them. And of course, it's not going to let me do that. Uh, RVM, let's say. RVM. Here you go. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it easier. I'll be agile here. Empty? Didn't I call it empty? Oh, can't give it anything else. Here we go. RVM info. Oh, actually, can you see up here? Barely. Well, this, oh, there you go. I have it in my prompt, so it'll show me what R Ruby version I'm using and what gem set I'm on. So I think you can just say RVM gem set empty. I don't know why that's not working. Or empty without anything. It's totally broken, dude. Brackets right no. Empty's in the list. Say RVM hitch up? No. Weird. You have to empty something. That is weird. Here we go. Whenever you're having trouble with RVM, just do this. He updates that stuff. So you see, there was an update already. And you do have to open up a, uh, a new one. A new uh, Say what? RVM reload. Oh, your RVM reload, yeah. No. Wow. This is not good. Do you do help? And like, can you see the help for empty? Yeah, you see there? Well, I mean, that doesn't tell you anything about how to use it. RVM help. RVM gem set. Uh, help. RVM. Empty help. I dash dash help. Nah. <laughs> Whatever. That's what you get for trying to do it live. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> uh, I showed you most of what I wanted to show you anyway. How am I doing on time? Weird. Here you go. Here's what I'm going to do. RVM uninstall RE. That works. That's going to kill everything. So <clears throat> when I go come, try to come back, it is it. Wow. 
Wow. See, now I can't find hitch because all the gems I killed, right? Gem install. Sorry, RVM install. Uh, RE. This may take a while, so let's talk about something. Uh, it may take longer than what I want to spend. But the, uh, let's talk about brew while that's going. Uh, so brew, right? This is the stuff that I have installed in brew. I have image magic. I have, you know, libtiff, jpeg. All this stuff is because of image magic. I have Postgres. I have prop tools, which allows me to do crazy stuff like uh, pgrep uh, Firefox. Uh, I think it's that shy. <clears throat> I mean, stuff like that. The, the, the cool thing is, if I wanted to install something, what's something you guys want to install? This will take forever, but uh, I have, well, let me just show you what it does, right? So if I want to say brew info for MySQL, it, it gives you, this is what it gives you after it installs it. It tells you what to do, where, what to symlink where, and then it loads it, and now it's just working. The, the, the biggest thing is that I want you to know and take away from this is that I have a step-by-step -step presentation, I mean presentation, uh, blog post, not that's for Hitch, that it, I, I have one for Debian and for uh, Snow Leopard. And basically, it'll get you what you saw today, which of course, this is step zero is uninstall Mac ports. And then, um, you know, install the rest of the stuff. You'll notice that I ch own user local to, to who am I, which is the user that you're running with. And what then. If, what if you have more than one user on that machine who wants to brew and install <clears throat> things? Who wants to brew and install things? Yeah. Uh, who do you have in there? I just have multiple accounts on my machine. You do? I do. Yeah. One's crippled by the corporation, the other isn't. <laughs> <laughs> then use the one that is crippled by the corporation to be the master of disaster. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of, because it, it, with our pairing stations, right, we have a dev user. And then we, had, we set everything up as that dev user. And then so from, from that pairing station, you can brew install, do anything. No, no pseudo at all okay. uh, from that Mac. Mm -hmm. So we had multiple dev logging in and doing stuff like that. And we were using Mac ports on it. Would Brew support that kind of thing? Could others? Um, ideally, what I, in that situation, I think what I would do is put everybody in the uh, staff or wheel so that they can uh, pseudo su dash that user, the one user that owns everything, and then do stuff at that user. I mean, that's the best. I mean, it, it's kind of, it, this, this is, has worked for me in the development environment. I haven't gotten it to, I haven't perfected it in the production environment yet. It's just, it's because of tricky stuff like that, right? And, or even RVM. Does anybody, has anybody done RVM in, in production environment? In production? Wow. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So, was there another question? Yeah. If I create a different directory and what? Oh yeah, you can install Homebrew in wherever you want to, right? And this, but this is the prescribed. Uh, way that they they tell you to do it, but yeah, there's this is not the only way to make this work for the brew stuff. So yeah, you can. But the thing is this though, in reality, by doing this, you can come back and not use homebrew for whatever reason it doesn't work for you. You can bring the sources into user local source or whatever, uh, compile the stuff, and it's still gonna work because everything is under user local. So it's 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 it gets out of the way of everything else. Um, I don't know if you saw.
when you see here, when, when we said brew install wget, and then you go to user local, you'll see that it created under the seller. Is it, you know what I've done? So, sometimes I had an issue with a, with a, with a uh, pairing station. I could not get Postgres installed for whatever reason. So what I did is I deleted seller. I went to my other identical iMac, copied the seller directory into here because they're all the same user, right? And it worked. Everything worked just fine. We had Postgres running. We had everything running just fine. Um, let's go check on our little Billy over here. Hey, there you go. Uh, so RVM list shows us our uh, REE. RVM use REE one one less E default is going to make that guy my default one. Gem install. Now, RVM use at global is going to oh, use REE at global. Right now we're using the, the global gem set. I'm going to say gem install uh, hitch. And then what I'm doing there is I'm making it available, I'm making hitch available in the global um, gem set. Now I can just go into a different, uh, even, even a different, so for instance, if I go to my, um, this is my, um, this is my blog, because I use, what do I use, Webby. And it has its own, as you saw, it has its own gem set, right? But it also will share the global uh, gem set. So I should be able to say gem list hitch, and it's going to have, you know, gem list is going to have the hitch, and it's going to have the other stuff that it needs. Um, so where was I with the hitch stuff? Here we go. All right, so now if I say gem list, it should be almost not empty. Bundle install. Oh, OK. So yeah, I think that's all I had. Is there any more questions? I think I'm out of time. Quick question on RBM. Yeah. Great question. Here we go. <clears throat> I have an RVM, I have <laughs> RVM use 1.9.2 at Rails 3. Now, gem list, uh, I thought I had this installed. Rails. Now, what I would do for this particular issue, while it's uh, installing, I'll, I'll tell you what, what this is going to do. This is going to allow me to uh, RVM use 192 at Rails 3 to generate and create new Rails 3 projects, right? And then inside of there, I'm going to create a .rvmrc that's going to have whatever Ruby version I want, whether it's 192, 187, REE, JRuby, whatever, right? But this now allows me, now I can say Rails, right, dash V, and now I'm running Rails, and now I can run all my generators from here. And then once I, once I create the, um, what do you call it, the directory, like, you know, yesterday, we, what was it, Rails? New. Huh? Rails new, and then the name. New uh, Twitter, whatever we called it, right? Oh, but I'm going to create that here. <coughs> Rails new Twitter 3. Oh. And that didn't work. Oh, oh, that's because I am, yeah, that's because I need to do this. There you go. And of course, at that point, I would go into Twitter 3 and then create my .rvmrc. Actually, you can do this, rvm dash dash rvmrc dash dash create use our, uh, I guess we can do go with RE, at, and call it Twitter, if I can type, 3 O. Oh. And what this creates is this RVMRC file, which looks exactly like my hitch file. And now it's going to either create it or just set up from, I was talking to Wayne 
uh, on uh, IRC just yesterday, actually, and he was telling me that this is the, you know, this is a, a performance optimization. So that's the top part over there. It says if it finds a directory, it loads it. Um, and you can do stuff like, because this is what I had so that, so that at least your RVM dash prompt, so that whenever you, well, it, the first time you go into it, it asks you if it's going to be, because you're executing code, if it's trustworthy, and then you trust it. And then this is what I was going to show you. It, it's telling you what you just selected and then where you're at. Questions? No more questions? Oh. He is almost always in IRC. So that's it for my demo. No more questions? No? And thank you. <laughs>